So today we're going to talk about serial binary. It's much faster than ASCII. And in ASCII, you have to send a bunch of characters, which makes a pretty long string. In serial binary, it's just a couple words of data. Um, but before you watch this, uh, make sure you take a look at doing motion with ASCII first just because it's so much easier to show how to get things set up and going with ASCII right out of CME2 over the serial port. And then we'll learn how to do the serial binary, which is what this uh, instruction will be about. So besides a much smaller data packet, you can also transmit at 230 kilobits, which is twice the uh, default setting that's in CME2. So that will also double the uh, communication rate I like to say greater than 100 kilohertz uh, for update rate. So <clears throat> to find this note, you look under Sapori app notes on the copy web page, and there's a serial binary interface note. <clears throat> this note talks about uh, getting and setting variables over the ASCII interface, and it talks about the uh, structure of the serial binary command. Um, so we can see here that we've got. Uh, some some data structure uh, with a, with a checksum. Um, there's the size of the data in 16-bit words and the opcode uh, that's used uh, to send a command. And every serial binary command that's sent is replied to with a response, which also has a checksum and an error code. Um, the advantages of the checksum are that you you know your data is good. Uh, when you when you unpack it, so that's that's also a very handy uh, tool for the serial binary. Um, calculating the checksum is an XOR function, and it's described here. Uh, what you send down to the drive is the um, <clears throat> the checksum of the data and command that you're going to send, um, and also coming back, uh, you you get the checksum. Now I've had questions on. You know how do I do this in my in my Java program? So we're going to take a quick peek here at the checksum method for a Java example. And so this this program uh, starts off uh, with going to calculate the the checksum, and you can see. How this is done in in the Java program, so you XOR with 0x5a, and uh, that that gives you the checksum of, of the information that you're going to send down to the drive, um, and also helps you unpack it. Uh, there's also a little note here. It's a C++ example of sending bytes down um, from an array over a serial port, so we can see somebody using uh, Windows um, to do an output and an input from the UART on, on Windows. So that's the basic idea of the checksum. Um, as you can see, there's opcodes, you know, opcode zero, no operation, retrieve operating mode. Um, get a, checksum of the flash. I mean, these are a little obscure here, but the ones you use typically are get variable, opcode 12, uh, and then set variable, opcode 13. Um, the op opcode 16 reset. And opcode 17 are the trajectory commands. So in ASCII, you'd say T space 1. Um, or T0 or T2 for homing. So these these are the trajectory commands. And as you can see, uh, some of the bits are used for multi-axis trajectory updates. So you can update two axes at the same time or just one axis. Um, so those are very handy uh, opcodes that, that we can talk about. So just for information purposes, uh, under downloads, under commu communication protocols, we can see uh, the ASCII guide. We can see the parameter dictionary, which has all the variables uh, that we can use the opcodes to read and write. Um, there's also a can open programmer's guide here uh, that will be handy. So this is my little serial binary guide 
which I wrote to try to figure out what the heck's going on here with the serial binary. Um, you can see that uh, there is a com log in CME2, which uh, we can use to see the, uh, the data packets that are, that are going down and coming back from the drive, the serial binary commands. Uh, this is getting current uh, from the drive. Um, so we can, we can use CME2 uh, to, to look at basically any parameter that we're setting or getting. Um, for example, uh, here's, here's the data packet that we're going to send uh, to get the current. So we have opcode C, which is uh, opcode 12. So convert that hex into a decimal and then look it up in the uh, serial binary guide and you'll see our C is A, B, C, and 12. Yeah, so opcode 12. Um, there's the, the header contains the node ID. Uh, there's, there's a checksum that's been calculated and stuffed in here. Um, there's one data word that we have, uh, which is the variable ID. So 0xc is the, uh, the current here. So here's the parameter from the parameter dictionary. 0x0c is the Q current in units of 0.01 amps, and it's in RAM not flash, it's a read only. Um, so that's what you send down to the drive in serial binary format in that in that way. And and then this is what you get back. So the node replies back. Hey, this node replied, here's my checksum. Yeah, I'm going to give you one data word and there's no error status code coming back at you. And here's the data value that's returned from the drive in hex. So convert that to decimal and that's in units of 10 milliamps. So in my note here, we can see, you know, the breakdown of the bytes. Um, so you can do, you know, node zero, unless there's some CAN nodes there for serial multi-drop. <clears throat> so drives connected together over CAN from, you know, from node zero is the master, nodes one, two, three on, on up are, are the, the slaves to the node zero. So you can talk to them too. There's the XOR with 5A, <clears throat> so calculation of the packet for the checksum. You can see the manual for more details. One data word, C is 12, opcode 12, and the variable ID is 0x0C, and that's the variable we're trying to get. And then we can see the data come back. This was 100 decimal to equivalent of 1 amp. Okay, so what we're going to do is take a look at CME2 uh, communication log, and we're going to do typical kind of move, and we'll see all the things that CME2 does uh, when, it, when it makes a move. So I'm going to open up the control panel, and uh, right now I'm in a, a can open mode over Ethercat, and I'm disabled because I'm in a pre-op state, but I'm going to check the enable jog option checkbox. And uh, a little glitch there with the display. So you can see um, when I do check that check that box, you can see what happens with this command. So any moves going on get aborted. The desired state, which is uh, parameter ID 0x24 out of the parameter dictionary, gets set to hex 15, which is decimal 21. So the mode of operation is position mode. And then the drive returns back. And, and a OK. <clears throat> so there's the 5A checksum on a bunch of zeros. And I'm going to do a positive jog here. Um, I tune this thing up for really fast, so let's see if it can really do 10,000 RPM. Oh, warning. Limit is close to the limit. Yeah, so I'm going to do 10,000, but I set a, a halt safe limit at 10,100. That's OK. Let's go ahead and do it. There it goes. So two things actually happen there. We'll take a look at this again. Clear the log. When, you, when you're jogging, you know, it's running. And then another set of commands to bring it back down. So make sure we're in the trajectory mode, trajectory profile mode. There's the send and the receive. Um, trajectory position command. 
Um, actually, this is just a forward. I'm in a velocity, in a position mode doing velocity profiling. And position <clears throat> 1 is forward and minus 1 is reverse. The X cell and D cell, uh, that's in units of uh, counts uh, per second per second. Well, actually, the units are like 100 counts in, you know, there's uh, 30 counts per rev here with Hall, so that's a relatively small number. For XL, D-cell, and the velocity, the 10,000 RPM in units of counts, uh, 0.01 counts per second, uh, I have 30 counts per rev with these Halls, and I'm going 10,000 RPM. So we got to do the math. Um, there's a start move. This is the trajectory update. Uh, there's the op code. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, this is hex here. Uh, op code 17. So that's that's uh, the start of the trajectory update, and then it replies that it did that. And then again, after we start a move, uh, we also we're going to decelerate. So these parameters are set again, and the, and the drive comes down to a stop. Okay, so I've got a couple minutes left, so we're going to talk about, I'm going to allude to something that you could do with a serial binary command. Um, there's an object in the can open programmer's guide, and it says for can open or ethercat drives. So I haven't done this yet, but if you take your serial binary command and do a transmit SDL, pack, pack the, the serial binary, to this object 2000, um, we'll unpack it and execute serial binary command. This is the way that CME2 communicates. CME2 does serial binary. So what it does is it sends a CAN, an SDO CAN message down or packs an Ethernet message with an SDO and the drive un unpacks it. So you can see sending serial commands over CAN open, the same, it's a COE, CAN open over EtherCAT. So there's your basic overview your byte structure, and um, we could uh, we could make an example of doing this uh, at a later date. I would start off with a CMO SDO example and modify it to write some parameters uh, to this object 2000, and then uh, then again we could do it with the the uh, CMO EtherCAD or Ethernet, and then unpack it. But that's uh, that's a lesson for a later date. Okay, thanks for watching.